This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. My name is Robin Connell, coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at Hotmail.com and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. This hour, Exxon Nation, we're going to be speaking about cloning, antimatter, ice ages, synthetic DNA, and how some of science's biggest discoveries unwittingly support the Bible. Now, there's always been a struggle between science and religion, but the struggle has intensified as major scientific advances continue. Many critics believe that scientific breakthroughs like cloning and synthetic DNA contradict the Bible. However, according to our very special guest this hour, professional engineer and minister Donnell Duncan, the Bible not only supports scientific breakthroughs, but also mentions several of them. And uh, we're joining us now from Atlanta, Georgia, is Donnell Duncan. And Donnell, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you very much, Rob. I'm very excited to be here. Tell me, Donnell, um, what was your inspiration for writing your book? Well, in 2000, I was a young physics student, Mm -hmm. and I was doing research at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California. Yes. And I was doing a presentation on the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And during the presentation, someone asked me a question. They said, how could you be a Christian? and be doing research on the Big Bang. You're not supposed to believe that stuff. So, instantly, my mind went into a yeah, why am I doing this? And it took me 10 years to figure out that there's actually a connection between what I've been doing during the day mm-hmm. and what I believe in my heart concerning the Scriptures. That's where the book came from, Faith Science. It takes the faith that's in the Scriptures and it combines it with the science that's in laboratories. And this is the product. What is, your, what is your scientific background, if you don't mind me asking, Donnell? Well, the first thing I did was apply physics. And when I started off with applied physics, mm-hmm. I went ahead and did civil engineering. And then I did a graduate degree in structural engineering. So at this point, I'm actually a professional engineer, so I design structures. And I also have a degree in physics that I use as the foundation for all the applied engineering that I do. So that's my academic background. And what is your theological background? My theological background, I grew up in the church. My father is a pastor. Oh, wow. So I grew up in the church Mm -hmm. with with my father. My uncle is a pastor. My grandfather is a pastor. It's like, that's my life. And my parents decided that I'm supposed to go in a different direction I'm supposed to take all that I've learned growing up in the church into new horizons. So they didn't want to send me to the church. So here I am outside of that, those four walls, basically doing something that I was born to do. 
All right, uh, Exo Nation, my guest this hour is Donnell Duncan. We're going to be talking to Donnell about his book. It's a very exciting book, and uh, it basically supports what I've been saying from day one. There is a definite connection between religion and science, and I'm so happy to see science and theology closing that gap because once they start really working together, there will be a lot of mysteries that are better understood. But like I warned you, Many times, for every answer that comes out, 20 more mysteries will appear. Donnell Duncan is our guest. The name of his book is Faith Science, Where Faith and Science Method Collide. That's where faith, uh, faith science, where faith and the scientific method collide, I should say. His website, www.faithscienceonline.com. Donnell and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We'll be back. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. And welcome back, everyone. Donnell Duncan is my special guest. We're talking about uh, Donnell's new book entitled Faith Science, Where Earth and uh, the Scientific Method Collide. His website is www.faithscienceonline.com. Tell me, Donnell, should science and faith really be connected? You know, it's interesting that these two aspects of our lives are so important, Mm -hmm. especially for somebody like me, where... My entire career and my education is based on science. And the life that I live every day is based on faith. And there is no need for that collision to place, because what's interesting is the more you study science and faith and begin to look at some of the parallels, you are surprised at how much they can be connected. And I think what happens for us is you don't want to get one-sided. Mm-hmm. That's something that... Um, Pope John Paul talked about when I said it's important for science to be paid attention to with religion to prevent idolatry. And it's important for religion to be focused on even among scientists to prevent them from becoming too materialistic. And one of the reasons for that is people just want to be one-sided and fight a lot easier, but balance gives you a much better perspective. So, so tell me, Donnell, what exactly is faith science all about? Well, it begins with looking at cutting edge scientific phenomenon through the eyes of Scripture. And then, second half, look at the whole concept of scriptural faith using the scientific method. So, what I'm doing basically is I'm saying, as a man of faith, what should science look like? And then, as a scientist, how should I approach faith? So from both sides of the spectrum, I look at it. So, for example, when I say 
cutting a stem for some reason. I mean, I have a chapter in the book on cloning and stem cells. I have a chapter in the book on antimatter. Mm-hmm. I have a chapter in the book on synthetic life. I'm going to show you in the scriptures the Bible discusses it. I talk about entropy, and I talk about different things like that, where the Bible discusses all these things. And it will fascinate you what's actually said inside there. All right, let me ask you a very deep theological and scientific question. Who okay. is God? You know what? For me, I believe God is everything that we are, everything that we came out of, mm-hmm. came out of God. So God, for me, is he is someone who exists before there was time, out of whom time came. He exists before there was space, and out of him came space. So he is like the source of everything. And at the end of it all, when everything is boiled down and there is, uh, uh, we keep digging and digging to get to the foundation mm-hmm. of everything, in the beginning, God. So I look at him as, he's the beginning of everything that exists. God. So he is truly our Alpha and our Omega. Yes, that's exactly what I believe, yes. All right. The beginning and the ending of it all, yes. T- t- tell me, Donnell, how do you see the Big Bang Theory as it relates to the Bible? That's awesome, because as I said in the first segment, in 2000 I was doing a presentation mm-hmm. on the cosmic microwave background. Right. And my, my experiment that I was doing at the Lawrence Berkeley Labs was based on a polarimeter which was measuring the cosmic microwave background, which at the time was the hottest evidence of the Big Bang. And I'll tell you some things about the Big Bang. The project that I was working on was sponsored by NASA, and it was part of the Kobe project. And the professor over the entire project was Dr. George Smoot. And he eventually, in 2004, four years later, he won the Nobel Prize in physics. So the Big Bang is my thing. I love that. So I'll tell you four key tenets of the Big Bang. Number one, the Big Bang says that all time and space came from a singular point. Number one. Number two, the Big Bang says that the universe is expanding. Number three, the Big Bang says that the universe is dominated by dark energy and dark matter, which means that when you look out into space, Mm -hmm. everything that's dark is not necessarily space or empty space. There's actually dark matter that exists, that's tangible matter that just does not reflect light. And the universe is dominated by that and dark energy. And number four, there, is, there are horizons of time and space because of the speed of light. As a result, there is only so far forward we can see in time and so far back we can see in time. Mm-hmm. For instance, you remember, because light travels for such a long distance, when we look up at the planets, what we really see is what happened on that planet when the light left that planet. By the time it arrives to us, everything has already changed on that. So as a result, we actually look back in time. And the Big Bang says there are horizons, which means there are limits to how far back we can see in time and space, and how far forward we can see in time and space, called the speed of light. Now, the Bible first verse in the Bible, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, all created heavens and the earth. And the first part of the Big Bang is, there is the beginning of time and space. So as a result, it agrees with the Bible, which says there was a beginning. Uh, at that moment... Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're having a bit of a problem hearing you. Your, 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 your voice is coming over very garbled. Uh, so maybe if... All right. Okay. Maybe if you, uh, I, I don't know if you're using a headphone, I don't know if you're using a uh, hands-free unit, I don't know if you, you know what kind of phone you're using, but if you could stay okay. stay in one place so that we, you don't drift in out, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'm sorry, are you going to now? It's still coming in garbled, uh, but let's try it. Okay, um, I'll continue. If I've got both, tell me, and I'll move. Alright? So... Did you hear the whole discussion about the Big Bang before? Yeah, time? yeah yes. Yeah, I, I heard it, but it's it's you're you're coming in muffled, and it's it's. Okay. I'm, I'm sure the listeners may be having a problem trying to understand what you're what you're getting at. So maybe if you could get okay. closer to a window, or if you're using a cell. Right, or, yeah. Yes, I will do that. Okay, Hold you're on. nice and clear there. Stay wherever you are. Okay, clear now. Yeah, nice now. Good. I'll continue. So I'll, I'll repeat what I just said about the Big Bang. Okay. I'll give it quickly. 
four main points about the Big Bang. First, all time and space came from a singular point. Mm-hmm. Second, the universe is expanding. Third, dark energy and dark matter dominate the universe. And four, they have horizons of time and space. Now, when you bring the Bible, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And the Bible basically says that all time and space came from a singular point in the beginning. And the Bible calls it God. What science calls it? The primeval atom, which in essence is a singular point from mm-hmm. which all time and space came. Secondly, the Big Bang says the universe is expanding. The Bible says God spreads the heavens. It also says he stretches it out like a tent. In other words, the Bible supports the universe is expanding. And the Bible says God is the one who stretches the heavens. The Big Bang says because of the initial Big Bang, the universe continues to expand. You get different reasons, but they feel the same thing. Number three, the Big Bang says that there are uh, the, the universe is dominated by time and by dark energy and dark matter. Now, in the Bible, if you look at the scripture that says, God created light and he created darkness. And it didn't do darkness as an absence of light, but it actually speaks of darkness as an entity of its own. So it of darkness, but we science of darkness, but dark matter is an entity that exists. It's dark, it doesn't look like light, but it's actually tangible. In addition, if you go back to the book of, it's early in the Bible, I think it's the book of Exodus, when Moses was freeing the people of Israel from Egypt. The ninth plague was a plague of darkness. And the Bible specifically says that darkness fell upon the Egyptians. It was so thick, it could be felt, and it immobilized them for three days. So it wasn't just an aspect of light, but there was some dark force that came upon the Egyptians in the Bible that forced them to stay right in the world. They could not move, and they could actually feel the darkness. And then the Bible also says that there are horizons of time and space. And I'll tell you this, on my website, I have all of that written out clearly in detail. So anybody who wants to find the exact scriptures, and also the exact scientific points concerning the Big Bang in the Bible can go to my website, statescienceonline.com, that's statescienceonline.com, and you'll find all of this information. It's on the blog. So that's there. So that's the Big Bang in the Bible. You know, we're having very a very hard time with your signal. So what we're going to do, uh, Donnell, is we're going to call you back on, on the commercial break, and we're going to see if we can get a better connection because I'm, I'm having a very hard time understanding what you're saying, and I understand, I believe the audience is going to have the same problem. So I'd like to rectify this because it is a very important subject, and uh, I, I'd appreciate it if you could just stand by for a moment. Exo Nation, our guest this hour is Donnell Duncan. I apologize for the technical uh, quality of the audio. We're going to certainly try and fix it over the news, uh, the news at the bottom of the hour. Donnell is the author of Faith in uh, Faith Science, Where Earth and the Scientific Method Collide. Donnell Duncan, P-E-S-E, is a structural, structural engineer, profile, a prolific young author, and dynamic speaker with international following. He is a two-time finalist for the Atlanta Power 30 Under 30 Awards. He is the founder of the Cracked Door Foundation, an organization dedicated to empowering young professionals with biblical principles. And as I said, his latest book is Faith Science, where faith, science, and the science, sci- oh, I'm sorry, where faith and the scientific method collide. His website, www.faithscienceonline.com. Donnell Duncan and I will be back on the other side of this news break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. We'll be back after the news. Don't go away. 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, thanks to our guest this hour, Donnell Duncan, and our engineers here at the Exxon. We've uh, got a perfectly clear line, and Donnell, it's great having you with us. Uh, for our listeners, uh, could you just backtrack a little bit, sir, and uh, once again talk about the four elements of the Big Bang? Right, I would love to. Now, I chose four because we don't want to get into every single thing, but I'll tell you. Number right. one, the core element of the Big Bang is what is called the primeval atom. And the Big Bang theory began with something that George Limiter in 1927 came up with where he said that everything in time and space came from a singular point and the bible says in the beginning god creates the heavens and the earth Mm -hmm. the big bang basically says there's a beginning and that's very important because a lot of people don't realize that the big bang agrees with the bible because the bible says there is a beginning of time and space the big bang says all time and space came from the primeval atom, or it came from a singular point. Number two, the Big Bang says the universe is expanding, and it's proven by redshift in the light that's reflected from planets that mm-hmm. shows you that the universe is expanding. It's moved, the planets are moving away from each other, and they use that to theorize that if they're moving away from each other, then they must have come from a singular point. Now, the Bible says that, number one, God expands or he stretches the heavens. It also says that he stretches it like a tent. So he spreads the heavens Mm -hmm. in one scripture, and he also says he stretches it like a tent. And what that says is the heavens are not stationary. And that's exactly what the Big Bang says. You planets are moving away from each other. You, the universe is expanding continually. And the Bible agrees with that. Number three, the Big Bang says that the universe is dominated by dark energy and dark matter, which means that when you look out into space and you see darkness, you assume it's all empty space. Yes. But the truth is, there's something called dark matter that's in the universe, that's tangible matter that just cannot be seen because it refuses to reflect light. And that's something that was theorized by the Big Bang and is also clear with experiments. And they've been, I mean, completely mystified by the presence of dark matter in the universe. And what that did is it almost gives you a tangible form of darkness where light is actually photons that move, so light is tangible, but we always assumed that darkness was merely the absence of light. So where there is no light, then it's darkness, when honestly, there's something called dark matter, which is an entity of its own that's dark, and you can't reflect light out of it, and it's just dark matter. Mm. And the Bible says God created light, and it also says God created darkness. And it didn't say it as God created light, and where there is no light, there is darkness. But it also says that he created darkness, like darkness is an entity of its own. 
And if you go back to the book of Exodus, when Moses had said, let my people go mm-hmm. to the Egyptians, and all the plagues took place, the ninth plague was a plague of darkness. And what happened in that plague of darkness, the Bible clearly states that darkness descended upon the Egyptians, and it was so thick that it could be felt, and it immobilized them for three days. Now I think about that. If some place is dark, you can move. Because something is dark, because you can't see, doesn't mean you can't move. You just can't see. That's right. But, but the Bible says that they could not move for three days because of a plague of darkness that could be felt. It was sick. It was clear that something descended upon them. And, and science says that there's something called dark matter, dark matter in right. the atmosphere. So what actually happened was dark matter en- engulfed that area where the, uh, the Bible was talking about. Yes, and it was tangible, and it could be felt, mm-hmm. and they could not move. Something came upon them. And the thing is, there's different ways to look at the Bible. Some people, because we don't see the science in it, we think it's all stories. But when you see science begins to prove many of the elements of the scriptures, mm-hmm. now you start shaking your head and you think, whoa, they have to be onto something. Because here is science, years later, thousands of years later, proving what has been said in the scriptures a long time ago, before we had all this high-tech technology, or before we had all of these PhDs, before we had all these projects, before we had NASA, the Bible said, Darkness descended upon them, and it could be felt, and they could not move. You know, I've often wondered, Donnell, how the mm-hmm. Bible would be written today if the events that happened so many years ago that inspired mm-hmm. the writing of the Bible were to actually happen today. How would we, how, what would the Bible be like? I'll tell you what's fascinating. The Bible would be similar to what it is right now, and I'll tell you what would be different. The okay. only thing that would be different would be the examples. Because many of the things that we read about, Mm -hmm. we're actually seeing some of it right now. But a lot of times we just don't see the connections. And it takes people who have their hands on both sides of the spectrum. For example, people who in the science field and also also have an understanding of the scripture to tell you, look, many of the things you read that seem to be so far-fetched in the scriptures, you can see things happening now that line up perfectly with it. I'll give you a random example. You think about cloning. Mm-hmm. Where right now, the, the Human Genome Project defines cloning as duplicating biological material. And there's a type of cloning called reproductive cloning, which is a technology used to generate an animal that has the same nuclear DNA as another currently or previously existing animal. So for us in 2011, we look at Dolly, the Finn Dorset sheep, as a clone. We look at the other clones that they've created since then. If you go to the Bible in Genesis... It says God created clone, man in his own image. And not just that, but there was actually a physical clone. God put Adam to sleep. That's right. Took biological material mm-hmm. out of Adam and created somebody else. That is actually the scientific definition of cloning. So the Bible has an example of cloning at the beginning so just like we would use a sheep right now yes. and use that as an example, in the Bible, that was Eve. Is it possible, and, mm-hmm. and this is just a, a theory, it's a hypothesis, is it possible mm-hmm. that God was a scientist who came to this planet from another star system and created life here as a scientist, and because we have no other way to explain, or had no other way to explain, the events that happened... We have put this scientist as a deity called God. I'll tell you something fascinating. Now, I want you to hold on to your seat. Okay, I'm holding I'm on to really you something tight. Fascinating. Go ahead and hold on to your I'm seat. I'm holding on. Good. <laughs> I'm going to read a scripture for you okay. that is going to blow your mind. Okay? Okay. Listen to this. I'm listening. It's Job chapter 35, verse 9 to 11. Listen to this. Mm-hmm. When times get bad, people cry out for help. They cry for relief from being kicked around, but never give God a thought when things go well, when God puts spontaneous songs in their hearts, when God sets out the entire creation as a science classroom Mm. using birds and beasts to teach wisdom. 
Bingo. God is a scientist, and the Bible says that. Wow. Job 35, 11. In the message translation, he lays out creation like a science classroom using birds and beasts to teach wisdom. So this would just be another example of, I, I forget where it was, where this island, I believe it was in the Pacific, had never seen anyone from the outside. Mm-hmm. And, and then outside technology was brought to this island, and mm-hmm. unknowingly the, the technology of today was looked upon by the islanders as, as, as a god, a deity because they had no other way to explain it. Could we be looking right. at the same thing here? And and another thought I've often had is that maybe the first, if I was to rewrite the Bible, and I, this is just uh, as an example, I would put Noah as the first chapter, where the ark is actually a spaceship, Noah and his family are scientists, and the animals two by two would be DNA. Mm. And you know, here's what's interesting. The Bible is all about us learning how it applies to mm-hmm. our lives. Now, when you look at Noah, actually, the way the Bible is written, life restarts from Noah. In other words, what existed before Noah is looked upon as the past, yes. and it's looked upon as the old earth. And what happened, the Bible calls it aforetime, mm-hmm. before time. And then from Noah forward, it looks upon life as a fresh start. So in other words, exactly what you're saying is exactly what the Bible does. The Bible uses Noah as a turning point in history from which it begins a brand new story and says, all right, Noah, you and your family are like pioneers right? on these animals. You all are going to recreate Everything on this earth, because he says, once again, the same thing he said to Adam and Eve, Mm -hmm. he said to Noah and his family, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So in other words, they started over what Adam and Eve had done those years before. So So in actuality, what you said, that's exactly what the Bible says. So it seems that uh, from Adam and Eve to Noah was one experiment. The experiment went wrong, it was wiped clean, and then Noah on the a new experiment was placed into effect. That's awesome. That's a, that's a nice way to look at it. So basically, if we were to look at the Bible through scientific means and scientific mm-hmm. terms, mm-hmm. the mystery is unfolding right before our very eyes as God, our Creator, wanted it to. Beautiful. And that's what I have done with my book, where I said, listen, it's not at war. We need to look at it from a, the perspective of, all right, let's hear out what the Bible says. Right. Let's hear out what science says. And let's not assume from the beginning, have a preconceived notion that they are opposing each other. Let's just listen, hear them out. And then when you hear them out, then make your decision. And now we are starting to realize there are so many connections. Because I'll give you something that I find fascinating. Right now in the Fermi lab and in CERN, and these two places have particle accelerators that billions of dollars are being invested into. And I'll tell you, one of the things they are looking for in these particle accelerators is something called the Higgs boson. Congratulations. Odor. You have been Whoops. selected to take part in our anonymous survey. Craig, what Please is this? Take our th- oh, Craig hit the wrong button. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Well, uh, thank you. Congratulations to me. Okay, so <laughs> the Higgs boson. Yes. Okay? So they are looking for this particle. It's an elementary particle that is theorized to give all other particles mass. Isn't, isn't that also called the God particle? The God particle. Now listen to what's fascinating about this. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1 to 3, it says all that is in existence came out of material that could not be tangibly evaluated. In other words, all that could be seen and felt came from material that could not be seen and felt. And the thing is, when they can prove that the Higgs boson is the mechanism that gives all particles mass, Mm -hmm. what they're proving is that essentially elementary particles are massless. Essentially. Because the Higgs boson, the behavior of the Higgs boson is what gives it mass. So mass is not inherent. Mass is due to the behavior of a mechanism called the Higgs boson. So as a result, everything in existence 
essentially is massless and also essentially is invisible because visibility is the reflection of photons. So what you see and consider as reality in reality is really something that's invisible and massless. So as a result, when the Bible says that all that can be seen, all that is visible, all that has mass, came from a realm that is invisible and massless, science agrees and says, you got that right. So it seems that what we're, what's unfolding in front of us these very days that is talked about in your book, Faith Science, where faith and the scientific method collide, is the bridging of theology and science. Yes. Yes, and it's, it's fascinating because all of this time, it's been right in front of our eyes, but we always assumed mm-hmm. that they were in opposition. And we didn't step back and say, hmm, what if we sit back and really begin to dig into this and we realize this is fascinating. And I mean, I'll tell you something even for, for the biologist. Donnell, please called... stand by. We're going to continue okay. this in a couple of minutes. We have to take our final break. Fascinating, Donnell. Thank you very much for joining us. This is a very interesting hour. Exonation, Donnell. Um, Duncan is our very special guest this hour. He's the author of Faith Science where faith and the scientific method collide. Fascinating book. Very interesting, gentlemen. His website is www.faithscienceonline.com. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exonation Donnell Duncan is my special guest this hour. We've been having a great discussion about his new book, Faith Science, Where Faith and the Scientific Method Collide. His website is www.faithscienceonline.com. First of all, Donnell, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great hour with you. Um, before we went to the break, we just started to talk about the Bible and bio- biologists, and I was wondering if we could just finish that off. Yes, I I put this as a free chapter on my website so that all your listeners could go and they can at least get this chapter for free, download it. It's a chapter on synthetic DNA. Now, in 2010, on May 20th, Science Express published a research article, Creation of a Bacterial Cell Controlled by a Chemically Synthesized Genome. And basically what happened is that there there were these research scientists at the J. Craig Venter Institute who were able to create a synthetic 
genome on a computer and implant it into a stripped cell and cause the cell to replicate. And what mm. they did was they basically wrote life in on a computer and then placed it into a cell and the cell responded. So they created life. They created DNA. And they were, I mean, they were celebrated. And the Financial Times had a headline which said, scientists create synthetic life form with a computer and four bottles of chemicals. All right. The so, New York, hmm? so does does that mean... In theory, that these scientists were God. This is what I'm going to tell you. And you believe, I'm, I'm going to hit you with something just now. Okay. Real interesting. Look at this. The New York Times said, synthetic bacterial genome takes over a cell. Researchers report. The Wall Street Journal said, scientists create synthetic organism. The Economist in London said, and man-made life the first artificial organism and its consequences. And a German newspaper called Die Zeit said, humans can now play creators. Wow. Now, here's what's funny. Revelation 13.15 says that the day will come when man will be given the power to give life. So the Bible says that the day was going to come when human beings would be given the power to give life to something inanimate. Revelation 13, 15. So what happened last year, mm-hmm. thousands of years ago, was written into the Bible in Revelation 13, 15, where the Bible stated clearly that the day was going to come where man would be able to do what was just done. All right, to create let, life. we're running out of time very fast. Let me ask you this. So mm-hmm. could it be interpreted that the book of Revelations is not about the end of the world, but it's the end of the age of ignorance and lack of knowledge that we are now going to the next step of our evolution? I'll tell you this. It's definitely the end of the world as we know it. But... There is a perpetuity. There will be more after it. It's just the end of it as we know it. Things are about to change drastically. All right, Donnell, we have to say say so long for tonight. We're going to have to have you back on in the very near future to continue this conversation. Thank you very much for sharing, and congratulations on a wonderful book. ExoNation, Donnell Duncan is my guest. Faith Science, where faith and the scientific method collide. www.faithscienceonline.com